So, my friend, this is the gospel for Christians. When the child of God dies, it is a sleep, it is an exodus, it is a departure, it is a change of residence, death becomes his usher, it is the putting off of the earthly tabernacle, and it is gain. No wonder the Christian is not afraid to die. But now just a minute. This is just one side of the coin. Now let us look at what the Bible teaches about death and the man who is not a Christian. First of all, the Bible teaches death is certain. Hebrews 9.27 says, It is appointed unto men once to die. So one of the facts of life is death. I know we don't act like it, we don't talk like it, and we don't live like it. But the fact remains, death is absolutely certain. In Genesis 5, you have the genealogy of the patriarchs. And it says of Adam, and he died. It says of Seth, and he died. And it goes on to say the same of nine men in that one chapter. And he died, and he died, and he died. This is a sobering fact, my dear people. In just a few years, the man who talks to you, and all who hear me today, we will have vanished from the earth. Death is absolutely certain. Do you remember what happened when H.G. Wells was dying? A stranger came in and roughly shook him and said, Are you interested in stocks and bonds? H.G. Wells said, Get out of here. Can't you see I'm busy dying? And my dear friend, that's your story and mine. We are busy dying because the Bible makes it clear death is certain. Also, the Bible says death is appointed. Hebrews 9.27 says, It is appointed unto men once to die. It is not accidental. Death is appointed. Death has an appointment with you, and you are going to keep that appointment, my friend. You can't evade it, you can't escape it, and you cannot excuse yourself from it. And I have news for you. You people who are always late for your appointments, you'll be right on time for this one. Yes, it is appointed. Even athletes die in the prime of life. Some time ago, I shook hands with Bobby Hull, the Canadian hockey great. I told my boy I didn't wash my hands for three days. Since I love athletics, I am always shocked when an athlete dies in his 20s or 30s or 40s or 50s, but they do. Death is appointed. But here's the third fact you should remember. Death does not end all. For after death will come the judgment. Hebrews 9.27 says, It is appointed unto men once to die, and then comes the judgment. My friend, you do not die, period. You die, comma. Something follows death. And the Bible says it is judgment. The resurrection of Jesus Christ is proof of the fact that judgment follows death. In Acts 17 and 31, Paul was preaching, and listen to what he said. God hath appointed a day in the which he will judge the world in righteousness by that man whom he hath ordained, whereof he hath given assurance unto all men in that he hath raised him from the dead. So here is fact number three you should think of. Judgment follows death. And here is a fourth fact I want to share with you. Here it is. A man is foolish to not be prepared for death. Now I tell my children, have the word fool in your vocabulary, but don't ever use it. Don't ever call anybody a fool. My mother told me that when I was a boy, and the closest I ever came to calling a man a fool was when I was a senior, playing second base on my high school baseball team. I was the captain. It was the ninth inning. An enemy batter got a single, thus he was on first base. There was no need for this, but he tried to steal second base. He was out by a country mile. But his spikes got me in the ankle, and the blood started to flow like a river. I lost my temper, and I said to that man on the ground, You, I, I almost called him a fool, but I didn't do it. I have lived all these years, and I've never yet called anybody a fool. You can realize how shocked I was then to read in the Bible right after my conversion. I was reading in Luke 12, where Jesus said, God called a rich farmer a fool. Why did he call him a fool? Because he had never prepared to die. 
This is a solemn fact you should ever remember. The Bible says you and I are foolish indeed if we have never prepared to die. And here is fact number five. Listen to it. Now is the time to prepare for death. Now is that time. I've heard people say they're going to wait until the 11th hour, and then they'll prepare to die in the 11th hour. Don't do that. You could die at 1030. My Bible says in 2 Corinthians 6 and 2, now is the accepted time. Now is the day of salvation. And here is fact number six. There is only one way to prepare for death. Church membership is beautiful, but that's not good enough. Baptism is a wonderful thing, but that is not adequate enough. Turning over a new leaf, I advise that, but that is not satisfactory. All of this is lofty and high and noble, but this does not prepare for death. In John 3 and 7, Jesus said to a man who was a far better man than you are, he said, Nicodemus, you must be born again. And this is the only way anybody ever under the blue skies can prepare for death. Listen to Romans 10, 9, and 10, that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. So Paul says in Romans 10, verses 9 and 10, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and confess him before the world today. There is no other way of salvation. I was reading this in my devotions the other day, and I paused because I want to tell you this is a tragic verse. In Proverbs 5.23, the writer speaks of men who die without instruction. But I have given all who hear me today instruction, Bible instruction, so you can be prepared for life and death. You can be prepared for time and eternity. In Christ we have eternal life. In Him we are prepared for death. So how can a man rise above the fear of death? It is through Christ. When we know Him, then we can say with the psalmist, Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for Thou art with me. A minister was holding special services in a coal mining area. Just one coal miner attended the final service, and as the sermon ended, that man accepted Christ as Savior and became a Christian. The next morning, Monday morning, he was working down in the mine. There was a cave-in. He was pinned under some rock and some rubble. Other miners came and extricated him. He was placed on a crude stretcher. He was put in the elevator. When the elevator reached the surface, he died, and his last words were these, I'm glad I settled it last night. And then he said it a second time, I'm glad I settled it last night. And then he tried to say it the third time, but didn't finish. He only said, I'm glad I settled it last. Have you settled it? When did you settle it, my friend? Make sure this very split second that Jesus Christ is your Savior. This is the one way, this is the only way anyone can ever rise above the fear of death. Don't cling to your excuses. Turn from them now, and as we go from your home as this broadcast and recording and cassette rendition ends, turn to Christ. Remember, he says to you in Matthew 11 and 28, Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. He says to you from John 6, 37, Him or her that comes to me, I will never cast them out. Will you settle it? Believe on Christ. Confess Him before the world. And my friend, you will not only have salvation, but I'll tell you one thing more. Then and only then will you be one of those men and women who has risen above the fear of death. And now please, may I sing one of my compositions for you? 
Mrs. Carlson goes to the organ to provide the accompaniment, and I sing, I think it's so appropriate, my song, No Tears, No Tears in Heaven. Life has its sorrows, life has its tears, trials and heartaches abound, but I know a place, it's a wonderful place, where no tears will be found. sky there will be no tears in heaven there will never say goodbye life's journey will be ended we'll see our Savior saved by grace there will be no tears in heaven no sorrows in the sky often I'm I'm sad as on my journey I go then I think of a land it's a wonderful land where no tears ever flow there will be no tears sky there will be no tears in heaven there will never say goodbye life's journey will be ended we'll see our Savior's face We'll join the ransomed as sinners saved by grace. There will be no tears in hell.